So let it be known that although Grandma never had a Facebook account while she was with us, in her passing, she's gone viral. <laughs> I posted a picture from last Thanksgiving of Grandma doing the Cornuto sign at Perry, um, and it got over 200 likes on Facebook. I can literally, if she was in the room right now, I can see and hear her going, Facebook, what the hell is that Facebook? <laughs> Enough of a pinch, uh, too many pinches, a nudge. So I, I really felt the weight of Grandma's passing when it occurred to me that the person that I'll, I will marry will never have the opportunity to be Grandma. She'll never have the chance to experience Grandma's uniquely sweet and savory meatballs. Mom, I promise your meatballs are also very amazing and delicious. She'll never have the opportunity to make an inappropriate joke while in church and laugh with her, even though she knows we're not supposed to make jokes in church. She'll never have the chance to have her cheeks pinched by grandma and receive a big forceful kiss on the cheek and hear, I love you, blank. Well, so I'm single right now, so I have to leave it as a blank. Um, I guess I could put like insert okay Cupid profile name here, but that just seems kind of inappropriate. Um, but for real, as I've had to explain to many friends um, and family, my feelings about grandma's passing, I think it's only deep in my appreciation for the incredible significance of grandma's life and what she represents for me and, and um, for all of us. For me, she represents a kind of epic, generational self-sacrifice. A kind of extreme unselfishness that I, as someone who's experienced so much privilege, can't even begin to understand. She was born into sacrifice. As the youngest of 10 children in a family of poor farmers who lived through the Nazi military occupation of Italy and the extreme poverty and homelessness imposed by wartime. When her siblings were hid away and a Nazi soldier pulled a gun on her father, she jumped in between her father and the soldier in order to protect him. She jumped in front of the gun, sacrificing her own safety and, that, and for that of his and, and her family's. As a mere teenager, she sacrificed everything she knew in order to marry and travel on a boat halfway around the world in the hopes of building a better life for her family, never again to see her parents. In America, she worked for decades in a factory to support her family and worked at home to raise children, the double burden of a working class woman in a patriarchal society, sacrificing her entire adult life, her own wants and needs for that of her family. She even sacrificed her own family's needs, using any extra money earned to send care packages back to struggling relatives in Italy. This made her a legend. Um, one story is told that one of her brothers, I believe, had seven boys, and in his home there were two pho photographs on the wall. One photograph was Jesus Christ, the other photograph, Anna Galante. <laughs> this is the kind of significance that she held for so many people. As a grandmother, she sacrificed of herself endlessly, whether it be through spending hours making homemade macaroni and meatballs, crocheting Afghan blankets for every single friend we've ever known, or just genuinely loving the countless people that were brought to meet her. The root of the word sacrifice is sacred, and the meaning comes from the idea of giving up something important for the greater glory of God. It is no coincidence that Grandma was a woman of incredible faith and incredible self-sacrifice. She would have given up anything for that which was sacred for her, her family, and the many that she treated like family. I call it a generational self-sacrifice because I believe she must have had a vision during all of those years of hardship and struggle that she would be building a future of opportunities for her children and grandchildren that her sacrifices would go towards the betterment of all of us, and particularly, I believe, for her grandchildren, that she must have had that vision for myself, for Greg, for Nicholas, and for Gina. Yet, as Chuck, grandma's adopted third son, has said very well, your grandmother was formed by hard times 
and hard work, but they never hardened her heart. Her sense of self-sacrifice only increased her capacity for love and for humor. She generously welcomed, loved, and gave herself to anyone who ever came to her door, be they friends, family, or strangers, and she was able to find humor in the lightest or darkest of moments. As many have said this week to, me, to myself and to others, she wasn't just Nicholas's grandma or Gina's grandma. She was grandma with a capital G because she was a grandma to all who knew her. So many folks have shared moving stories about grandma these last few days, and it gave me and I, I know my parents and others so much joy to read through them all and be reminded of the impact that grandma had on so many of us. One line out of all the stories has really stuck with me. It's possibly the, the most true, the single truest line. In Perry's message for Grandma, which he wrote on his smartphone, we need to get the man a laptop. He listed his top three memories of Grandma and ended with a profound sign-off. Love, her pain in the ass, Pierino. P.S. The last time I saw her, she told me not to forget about her. Impossible. Yes, Perry, you're right. In life, we miss our heroes, but it's impossible to forget them. I'm going to now read a poem by Gina called I'll Still Be Here. My loved ones, please don't mourn me. I'm still here, though you don't see me. I'm right by your side each night and day, and within your heart I long to stay. My body is gone, but I'm always near. I'm everything you feel, see, or hear. My spirit is free, but I'll never depart. And as long as you keep me alive in your heart. When you start thinking there's no one to love you, you can talk to me through the Lord above you. I'll whisper my answer through the leaves on the trees. My body is gone, but I'm always near. I'm everything you feel, see, or hear. My spirit is free, but I'll never depart, as long as you keep me alive in your heart. I'm the first bright blossom you'll see in the spring, the first warm raindrop that April will bring. I'm the first ray of light when the sun starts to shine. And you'll see that the face in the moon is mine. When you start thinking there's no one to love you, you can talk to me through the Lord above you. I'll whisper my answer through the leaves on the trees, and you'll feel my presence in the soft summer breeze. I'll still be here even though you can't see me, watching over you as I always have. I know you'll miss me from now until the end of time, but I'm not really gone. I never really left. I'm up here in heaven with God, the place where I now belong. And just remember, I love you now and I love you always. I'll be here in your hearts forever. Thank you.